guys, it's September, so that means that I have to do an August wrap up. So it is September, and that means that I have to tell you all the books that I read in August, which I read nine books in the month of August, which I'm ridiculously proud of because it was my first full month being at work, and I just was still able to read that many books. And because of working in a library, I now have so many more book recommendations I don't know what to do with myself. My TBR grew like twice in size, which is so exciting, but like a little stressful. The first book that I read in the month of August was The Diviners by Libba Bray. And I'll be honest guys, I did not like this. I listened to this book on audiobook, which actually helped with the process a lot because I thought the reader was excellent. She had great different voices for the characters. And I loved this concept, which is about New York in the 1920s. This girl from Ohio moves there and she has this weird power to be able to touch items and tell where they come from and secrets about the person who owned them and murders happen and she gets wrapped up in it and these all these kids have different powers. And it sounds right up my alley. Historical fiction, superpowers, love it. Okay, guys, no. I was not happy with this book. I thought the plotline was ridiculously dumb. It took way too long. Also, the writing quality was not something that I enjoyed at all. And for me, I just felt like it was trying to do too much in too little of time, except this book is honking, so that doesn't make much sense. And it didn't really feel like it accomplished a lot. I was really upset with the time that I felt like I wasted on this book. So I gave it a two out of five stars just because I did like the reader and I did like the original concept and I fell in love with the concept and I, I kind of want to hear what more happens but at the same time I'm like I don't I just don't really care. I listened to Pretty Happy by Kate Hudson which is her non-fiction book about how to live a healthy life or kind of it's more like how she lives her healthy life and she wants to like share her tips and secrets. I found this book to be very honest, very interesting. I did listen to it on audiobook which some of the positives of doing that was like it felt like Kate was talking right to you, which was really cool. For me, it was really relatable in that, and a lot of the things I did take away from her. The disadvantage to listening to it, also listening to it from the library, was I didn't have like the extra packet thing that came with the audiobook to like do the exercises, and I was listening to it in my car, so I think that brought me at a disadvantage to like really throwing myself into the activities that she wanted you to try. However, like I said, a lot of the eating healthy right things were really cool and some of the exercise things were also helpful. I, I thought that she was very down to earth and not like, I'm a celebrity, you should do these things. I, I thought her pieces also on meditation were very interesting as well. So I gave it a three out of five stars just because I think my experience wasn't as beneficial as it was meant to be, but I, I didn't hate it. So I, I thought it was pretty good and I picked some things out of it. And I'm gonna keep those and leave the rest because that's what you should do. Then I gave Hunger Games a reread because it was the traveling book started by the brunette bibliophile and I ended up giving it to Hannah over at the Tiny Book Dragon and I was so excited to reread this book and guys I forgot how good this book was. With the movies it kind of got hyped up but rereading this book I was like dang this is good like I forgot how strong Katniss is, but how much more she has to struggle, and her relationship with Peeta, and the, the hints that you get into it that there's a rebellion going on ahead of time. I'm assuming most people have read this book. If you haven't, I'm sorry I'm doing spoilers, but deal with it. It was so good, the little subtle hints and who was in on it from the beginning and what they were doing. It was so well developed, I ended up bumping it up to five stars because I was like, this is worth five stars. I mean, the series definitely disintegrates as it goes down, but I, I I really, really liked this one, and I liked rereading it. I should reread books more often, but there's just so many new books in the world, it's hard for me to do that. But I also appreciated doing it with the traveling book, um, which did take me a little bit longer because I was trying to make so many more comments, but I still think it was worthwhile, and it was like reading it with other people. It's pretty cool. So Chloe, I can't wait to see what your comments are when the traveling book is done for the year. I finally picked up Ready Player One. Seth, aren't you proud of me? <laughs> and I started listening to it on audiobook, and guys, it was awful on audiobook. One, Will Wheaton is a terrible narrator. I like him as a nerd person, and I like him and a bunch of other stuff, but he did not do different voices, and it was really hard for me to tell different characters at different times, and I didn't appreciate that at all. It was really hard for me. Plus, it was really slow because there's like game rankings in here, and he would sit there and read off all of the like person's username and then their points that they got in the ranking, like digit by digit, and you're just like, oh my god, I could skim over this if I could read it, and so I ended up reading it anyway, because it was just so slow. Everybody was like, oh my god, read the audiobook, and I'm like, no, 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 read read the book, don't listen to it, because it's just so much better, in my opinion. I really liked this book. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's set in the future where a video game is kind of 
taken over people's reality and it's like Willy Wonka in a video game. The video game creator dies and you have to find an easter egg in the game and then you get to like own the game and win all his money and all the things and there's an evil corporation that is trying to get it very much like Willy Wonka. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five stars just because some parts were really slow for me. Also not being an 80s child I did not get a lot of the references and so I think that pulled me away from the book. I got some of the nerdy references and I could appreciate the level of nerd that this is but because it wasn't my level of nerd I had a hard time connecting to it and some of the references were lost on me. But that's okay. That's fair. You know, it's his nerd, not my nerd. But I still liked it. I thought it was a good story. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters a lot too. And the adventure and the world. I can't wait for them to make it into a movie. It's gonna be super cool. Then I read Penny Royal Academy, which is a middle reader book about this girl who starts off running in the forest covered in spider webs and she wants to go to this academy to become a princess and fight witches and meet knights who fight dragons. And it's like a kind of another fairy tale retelling, reimagining, and it's a cool concept, but not well executed, in my opinion. I gave it a two out of five stars. The reason was is I could not stand the characters. Oh my gosh, no. I mean, it was a middle reader book, and it was clearly that they were middle readers, but not to, like, a Percy Jackson level where they're enjoyable and, like, relatable to a lot of people. No, they were, like, solidly, like, 14 years old, and I just could not stand some of the cattiness that was there. To me, it was a really, really cool concept because these princesses learn to fight witches. They're not, like, learning dainty things. They're learning you know, badass, how to fight witches things, trudging through the mud and all this stuff. And I liked the concept a lot and I would recommend it to a middle reader who I think can relate to it a lot more. But to me, I was just like, I can't stand these characters. Where the heck is this story going? Slash, I could totally predict what was gonna happen. And then there's like dragons that come into it and like the twist is not a twist. And I just, I was not a fan. And so my, my point in saying that was that it wasn't for me. I would still, if I found a like 13, 12 year old child that wanted to read something in this genre, I would hand it to them willingly and say, yes, please read this. But I just think I was a little too old for this one, if that makes any sense. I hope it does because that's how I feel. Then I read The Sculptor and this was a huge graphic novel and by huge I mean it was like almost 500 pages. and. Oh my gosh, this one blew my mind. I think I gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars just because some of the images were hard for me to understand and I think that's because I'm still so new to graphic novels, but the story was incredible. It's about this guy who sells his soul to the devil that for the next 200 days he can create any material that he wants. He's like down on his dumps artist in New York and he's not getting any shows. He sells his soul to the devil letting, saying, I'm gonna die in 200 days but for the next 200 days anything I touch can become anything I can imagine and it's this awesome story about like trying to get out of your own head and artistic stuff and then he finds a girl that he falls in love with but he's gonna die in 200 days and it's such an interesting concept and yet he like befriends the devil or death it's not the devil it's it's death because I don't want to like put a religious connotation on him it's death it's so interesting and it examines all these really fascinating concepts about like growing up and artistry and what is art and I really really liked it I did. It was so good. And it was a fast read, too, because it's a graphic novel. And I, like, sat down and read it in one day, and I was just engrossed in it. And the art is pretty. The art's gorgeous. You know, really, really simplistic, but good. Then, as most of you know, I read Sarah Ella's Unblemished, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And I gave a full review of this, which I will link somewhere, and you can come look at that. But basically, I really enjoyed this world. Um, I'm fascinated with the characters. The love triangle um, was interesting and did not make me vomit and I am excited to see how she explores the rest of this world. So yeah, check out my full review on this one. I really liked it and you should just watch that video. I'll save time. Finally, the last two books that I read in the month of August were Soulless and Changeless, which was recommended to me by a coworker and I'm binge and I'm binge reading The Living Daylights out of this series. I'm on uh, blameless right now and I love this series. It's set in like 1870 and werewolves and vampires have been integrated into society and this is just such a cheeky read. It's about this woman who is, doesn't have a soul and so she turns them mortal, uh, supernatural's mortal when she touches them and she falls in love with a werewolf and there's a murder and it's, like I said, the it's so cheeky. The plot line is not the best thing. There's like just enough of adult romance to enjoy it and the characters and the language are just delightful. It's light, it's easy, and I just am enjoying this world so much right now. Like I said, I'm already on 
Blameless, which is the third one, and there's like a whole other sets of this world, like there's a whole prequel YA series, and then there's a series about her daughter, and I just really can't wait to keep diving into this series. We'll see if I get sick of it, but I'm liking it right now, which is what matters. Working at a library means that a lot of audiobooks are happening, as well as a lot of borrowed books, so I don't have all of the ones I read, but I swear there's six more here somewhere. These are the books that I read in the month of August. Let me know if you have any comments on any of these or any questions. I love to talk to you guys as always. Until next time, bye! Libra Bray just has not ever, I just, this, I don't think Libra Bray and I have had a good relationship because I DNF'd the great and terrible beauty and yeah, that's okay. We can move on. Finally, the last two books that I read in the month of August were, wait, did I read? I did.